Emerson, Lake & Palmer are one of the greatest bands in the world, in my opinion. In fact, they're my favorite band. Three guys, Keith Emerson, Greg Lake, and Carl Palmer. Keith Emerson, incredibly talented keyboard player, piano player. Greg Lake, an amazing voice who wrote all these beautiful songs, also could play bass like a genius, although no one gives him credit for it. And Carl, Par Carl Palmer, I kind of hesitate to even call him a drummer because it doesn't do him justice. He plays a drum set, but he also plays everything. He's a percussionist and an incredible drum composer. So those three, they were huge in the 70s. They started out in 1970, super group where Keith Emerson from The Nice, uh, Greg Lake from King Crimson, Carl Palmer from The Crazy World of Arthur Brown. These three musicians came together and created an explosion of amazing classical rock music, I guess if you want to call it that, with some jazz influence. Ultimately, it's progressive rock, and they did it. They did it well. So what's kind of funny, though, is they got famous for being a folk band first, even though that's not what they were at all. They got done with their first album, which is full of, you know, three-piece progressive rock with a bunch of Hammond organ, maybe some pretty classical piano, but it's a pretty heavy-hitting album. And then they get to the end, and they're like, all right, guys, we're done. And the producer, or whoever it is, goes, no, actually, we need one more song for an album. So they look around and Greg Lake says, well, I've got this little, I've got this little thing I wrote when I was a kid. So he lays down Lucky Man, doesn't even record it to a metronome and has Carl Palmer play along in the background. Greg adds a couple harmonies. Keith Emerson comes in and does a big old synth lead at the very end, which was even featured on The Simpsons, by the way, you should check it out. Um, Lucky Man comes out, and that's the first single off their album, even though it's nothing like the rest of the album. Anyway, they get famous, people start buying their album, the first album, Emerson, Lake & Palmer, self-titled, and are blown away by this band. Their second album comes out called Tarkus. They go even more progressive. They got a 20-minute title song that's all over the place with a crazy riff. Something like that. I can't play it. Greg Lake could. Keith Emerson could. Carl Palmer could. And we couldn't. That's why they were Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. And that's why we just sat behind and listened. Now, I'm not even from the 1970s. I was born in 1990. But I had to kind of discover these guys and go out and find them. They really did not have the staying power that bands like Led Zeppelin, The Doors, The Beatles, all those famous bands from that era that still continue to get just tons of plays. Nowadays, you might hear from the beginning... Or you might hear Lucky Man, or maybe if you're lucky, Carnival 9. But the thing is, is they are such a strange and talented band that it really takes a special type to get into Emerson, Lake & Palmer. Now, why are they not as famous as they should be, in my opinion? Well, it's pretty simple. It's a little complex formula called going pop to not pop, or not pop to pop. And what happened is with a lot of these bands, like the Beatles um, and... For Beatles would be a perfect example. You start out poppy, it's all about singer-songwriter type of stuff, and then you go progressive. Emerson, Lake & Palmer kind of took the opposite approach, where they started out progressive with all these incredible albums, my favorite of which being Brain Salad Surgery, and then as they went on, they started feeling the need to start writing poppier songs. The problem was, Emerson, Lake & Palmer never was good at writing poppy songs. They were pretty good at writing folk songs, progressive rock songs, classical, beautiful vocal songs, but they really weren't a pop band. So when they tried it, the, the critics hated it, and it panned it. And they started referring to Emerson, Lake & Palmer as like overblown, pretentious, things like that. Supposedly... The critics of the day weren't big fans of Emerson, Lake and & Palmer and really kicked them to the curb. Well, I wish they hadn't, and unfortunately they have, but I would really recommend anyone who hasn't gotten into Emerson, Lake & Palmer, start from the very start, their first album, first album Emerson, Lake and & Palmer, and follow it towards the end, and then have a little bit of understanding for what they were going through when they decided to start writing pop songs. Ultimately, if you're a band, start pop and then go progressive. Don't do it the other way around. Critics will hate you and your fans might drop off. Ultimately though, after selling hundreds of thousands of records, being on stage in front of hundreds of thousands of people in one sitting, for instance, the Isle of Wight or the California Jam, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, they were huge and they should be huge, but they're not. And so it takes people like me 
telling other people about Emerson, Lake and Palmer to tell them, tell, it takes people like you. If you're into ELP, share this video with someone and have, have them kind of get their minds wrapped around this incredible band that we have seemed to have forgotten about. Keith Emerson is gone. Greg Lake is gone. Only Carl Palmer remains, and we owe it to Emerson, Lake and Palmer to truly honor them for the band that they are. Check it out. Please subscribe. I'm going to be talking more about music history on this channel. My name is Lucas. All you got to do is hit subscribe and tell your friends about this video. Thank you.